Hello, so today we will be solving this problem called distinct numbers. We will be given a list of n integers and our task is to calculate the number of distinct values in the list. And n can be as large as 2 times 10 to the 5th and the values can be up to 1 billion. In this example here we have uh, 5 integers and two distinct ones, two and three. There are many ways to solve this problem. We'll discuss two of them and maybe mention some others. So let's go ahead. Well, the first solution that comes to mind relies on a data structure, uh, precisely on a set. As we saw before, uh, a set allows for uh, uh, the insertion and deletion of elements and retains those elements that are distinct. So for example, if we have a set here and then I insert th 3, it will keep uh, a value 3 here and if I insert another 3, it's not gonna add it here. It's just gonna keep just one value. So basically a set only keeps distinct values. So this gives us a way to solve uh, our problem right away. So if we are given an array, we'll just go through all the elements, insert them into some set, and then uh, at the end we just check the size of S. So this is our first way. And the complexity for this would be n log n because we go through n elements and each time uh, it takes us log n to insert into this set. Uh, but we have to say that the constant factors for sets are usually large. So they are to be avoided if the time limit is tight. And our second solution relies on sorting. So in our example, we had something like this. We had five elements, two, two, three, two, three, for example. Here, if we go through this array, we wouldn't know if uh, this element is distinct or not, if this is the first time that we saw this three or not. But if we sort our array, this arrangement gives gives a way to find out if an element is distinct or not. So all the twos are grouped into a block, then all the threes, and let's say we had a couple of fours here and a couple of fives, then we'd have something like this. So all the fours are grouped here and all the fives are grouped here. And in order to find the, the distinct elements, we can come up with a condition that they have to fulfill. So, if the, if the value that was, that came before you is equal to your value, then you are not uh, distinct or you are not the first occurrence of that value. So basically, in order to uh, find the distinct values, we'll just keep track of the first occurrence of each value. And the first occurrence of 2 is here for 3, 4, 5. And in order to disregard these other values, we can simply uh, check if our, if this value is equal to the previous one. If that's the case, we just ignore it. So the previous value here is 2. So we just ignore this 2. The same goes for this 2. This 3 is different from the previous value. So that's a distinct value. Same goes for this three. It's equal to the previous value. So disregard. This is valid. Disregard. Valid. Disregard. And the first um, element we encounter is always distinct. So we take it as one. And we could also solve this problem using map. So using a map, we could just 
uh, keep counting the frequencies of the elements and the size of the map would be equal to the size of distinct elements but this, this sorting approach is uh, the best one because its complexity is L log n as well so this complexity is n log n because sorting takes log n and uh, the constant factors are pretty low so this has to be the best approach so now let's go check out the code we'll start with the, the set approach so we'll start by reading our input the size of the array then for each element that we're gonna scan uh, first of all, we're gonna declare this set that will contain our values. Then we're gonna scan n elements. And for each value that we scan, we simply insert it into our set of values. And at the end, the answer is going to be the size of that uh, set called values. So that would be our answer. Let's submit this solution it worked now let's check out the other solution using sorting here too we start by reading the size of our, our, of our array then we declare a vector of values of size n then we scan all those values then as we said we have to sort our uh, array of values and in C++ we do this in the following manner we give an iterator to the beginning of our, our array and iterator to the end of our array and then this is a variable that will keep track of unique values and we'll go through all the values again from 0 to n and for each one if this is the first value i.e. E, uh, i is equal to 0 or if this value is different from the previous one then we have to increment our count of unique values here uh, one might say that values uh, might be uh, might get evaluated at minus one but that wouldn't happen because if i is equal to zero this first condition will be true uh, and for and because of that the compiler won't even check the second condition it will just get dropped so we increment our count of unique values and we just print that at the end so let's submit this solution as well. So it worked. So that's pretty much it for this problem. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.